In this video, I will show you how to use your basic trig functions, tangent, sine, and cosine, to find unknown sides of a right triangle. But first, a little review. Please remember that the ratio that you will get for sine, cosine, and tangent depend on what angle you're looking at. So, um, say if we're looking at this acute angle right here, and it has to be one of the acute angles. It can't be the right angle. If, uh, if this is the acute angle theta, um, the, of course, the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse, no matter which angle you're looking at. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. But um, the other two legs will either be opposite or adjacent to angle theta. Remember that adjacent means right next to, and opposite means across from. So um, with that in mind, these are the definitions of tangent, sine, and cosine. The sine of angle theta is the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. So um, tangent of angle C. From the perspective of angle C, the, um, the 12 is opposite, all right, because it's across from. The 9 is adjacent because it's right next to angle C. And of course, 15 is the hypotenuse no matter, no matter what. So because tangent is opposite leg over the adjacent leg, that is going to be 12 over 9. And we should reduce. Both of these are divisible by 3. So that means that the tangent of C is going to equal 4 over 3. OK, always reduce. Similarly, problem number 2, um, cosine of angle C. So from the perspective of angle C, um, this 16 is the adjacent leg, because adjacent means right next to. The 30 is the opposite leg. And the 34 is the hypotenuse, because it is across from the 90 degree angle. Cosine is defined as the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So that would be 16 over 34. That can reduce. So um, both of these are divisible by 2. So that's going to be um, 8 over 17. So that would be the answer to number 2. Always reduce. And similarly, number 3. This time we're doing the sine of angle A. Uh, so here's angle A down here. From the perspective of angle A, 15 is adjacent because it's the leg that's right next to angle A. Um, the 8 is the opposite leg because opposite means across from. And the 17 is the hypotenuse no matter what because it's across from the 90 degree angle. The sine of A is defined as the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So that would be 8 over 17. And that can't be reduced, so this is the final answer. All right, so now we will use tangent, sine, and cosine to uh, find unknown sides like this. So first, you have to decide which one of the three trig functions you're going to use. So to figure that out, you have to decide um, what are the two pieces of information that you have, and what are you trying to find. So start with the angle. This is the only angle we've got. So we have to look from the perspective of this angle. From the perspective of this angle, the 20 is the adjacent leg. All right. This is the hypotenuse over here. I'm not even going to label it right now because we don't know what it is. And we're not looking for it. All right, so this is the adjacent leg. And uh, this leg that we're looking for is the opposite leg. OK, so we're, we're dealing with opposite and adjacent. So which one of those trig functions involves opposite and adjacent? The tangent function. Tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. 
So that's how we know that we're going to be working with the tangent function. So we will say the tangent of 39 degrees, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, is equal to opposite over adjacent. That's x over 20. So if I want to solve for x, we just have to multiply both sides by 20. Okay, and that will get x by itself. So we can just put the uh, left side in the calculator. All right, again, make sure your calculator's in degree mode. But we can just type in 20 tangent 39. Boom. So they want three decimals for this. So that's 16.196. Got to round up if it's five or higher. So 16.196. All right, for number five, we have this angle right here. And this X is the hypotenuse. All right, we're looking for the hypotenuse, and we're given this leg over here. Is this the adjacent leg or the opposite leg? It is the adjacent leg because adjacent means right next to. So which trig function involves adjacent and hypotenuse? That is the cosine function. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's how you know to use the cosine function. So we will write cosine 69 is equal to 16 over x, all right, adjacent over hypotenuse. Now here's a shortcut I'd like you to know. When you have something that's equal to a fraction, and uh, if you want to find the denominator, if that's where your unknown is, um, you can solve this in one step by um, Sw swapping these out. You can uh, move the x where the cosine 69 is, and the cosine 69 can go where the x is. So if you reverse those, um, then you'll wind up with x is equal to 16 over cosine 69. Okay? You can only do that when it's in the denominator. Now, you could have cross-multiplied and done a, a couple extra steps, and you would get the same thing. Um, but this comes up often enough that I think it's just worth memorizing that you can just bloop, switch them. All right, and then you can just put this in your calculator. 16 over cosine 69, let's go. <clears throat> okay, so 16 over cosine 69. Boom. 44.647. The next number is an 8, so you got to round up. 44.647. All right, that's the answer number five. Number six, all right, we've got this angle. We are looking for this side, all right? This is the adjacent leg, all right, because it's right next to the angle. Um, this 11, is it the hypotenuse or the opposite leg? The hypotenuse is over here. So this 11 must be the opposite leg. Okay, so we've got opposite and adjacent. Which trig function involves opposite and adjacent? That's the tangent function. So that's how you know we will do tangent. So we will start off by writing tangent 67 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that's 11 over x. Is this a situation where we can use the shortcut and swap these? Yes. When the variable's in the denominator, that's the best time to do it. So that will give you x is equal to 11 over tangent 67. Okay, you can just swap these on out. <clears throat> And then you can put all of this in your calculator.
Okay, so 11 over tangent 67. <clears throat> so that's 4.669. And since the next number is less than 5, we will not round up. For number 7, we've got this angle right here. And then we've got x and we've got 18. Are either of these the hypotenuse? Yes, the x is the hypotenuse. Now, what's the 18? Is this the, uh, the opposite leg or the adjacent leg? This is the adjacent leg because it's right next to 25. The opposite leg would be across from the 25. So we have adjacent and hypotenuse. Which trig function involves adjacent and hypotenuse? That's your cosine function, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's how we know to use the cosine function. So we will say cosine of 25 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 18 over x. Is this a good time to use the shortcut and swap these? Yes. All right, when the x is in the denominator, that's when you're going to do it. So x is equal to 18 over cosine 25. And then you just put this in your calculator. 18 over cosine 25. All right, so that's 19.861. The next number is um, 5 or higher, so you got to round up. Number eight, this is the angle that we've got. Are either of these the hypotenuse? The x is the hypotenuse. All right, that just leaves the 11. Is this the opposite leg or the adjacent leg? This is the adjacent leg because it's right next to the 47. So which trig function involves adjacent and hypotenuse? That's your cosine function, adjacent over hypotenuse. So we will say cosine of 47 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so 11 over x. Is this a good time to use the shortcut and swap these? Yes. When the, de when the variable is in the denominator, that's when this is useful. So if we swap these, we'll get 11 over cosine 47. And then you can just put this in your calculator. 11 over cosine 47. 16.129. We will not round up because that's less than 5. Number nine, this is the angle that we have. And then we have the x and the 14. Are either of these the hypotenuse? Yes, the 14 is the hypotenuse. All right, what about the x? Is this opposite or adjacent leg? This is opposite because opposite means across from. This one that's blank would have been the adjacent leg. So we've got opposite and hypotenuse. Which trig function is that? That's your sine function. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's how we know to do the sine function. So we will say sine 42 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. OK, is this a good time to do a shortcut? And am I going to swap these? No, that only works when the variable is in the denominator. I mean, technically, I could swap the 14 and the sine 42, but that wouldn't help me get x by itself. So um, when the variable is in the numerator like this, this is when you simply want to multiply both sides by the denominator. We're going to multiply both sides by 14. OK, that will cancel these out. All right, so that gets x by itself. And you can just put this in your calculator, 14 sine 42, just like that.
9.368, got to round up. That's five or more, got to round up. So 9.368. Number 10, this is the angle that we have. And then we have this 14 and the x. Are either of these the hypotenuse? Yes, this is the hypotenuse. It's across from the 90 degree angle. So is this 14 the opposite leg or the adjacent leg? All right, it is across from the 72. That makes this the opposite leg. This blank one down here would be adjacent because it's next to the 72. Opposite and hypotenuse, which trig function is that? That's your sine function, opposite over hypotenuse. So we will do the sine function. So sine of 72 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 14 over x. Will we swap these, do the shortcut? Yes, that's how we do it when the variable is in the denominator. So um, this will become x is equal to 14 over sine 72. And then you can just put this in your calculator. 14 over sine 72. 14.720. We will not round up. That's less than 5. All right, number 11, we've got this angle, and then we've got these two sides. So are either of these sides the hypotenuse? Yes, x is the hypotenuse. It is across from the 90. Uh, what about the 10? Is this the opposite leg or the adjacent leg? Well, from the perspective of the 40, this is the adjacent leg, because adjacent means right next to and uh, 10 is right next to 40. All right, this blank side over here is the opposite leg because it's across from the 40. So adjacent and hypotenuse, which trig function is that? That's your cosine function, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's how we know to do the cosine of 40. Adjacent over hypotenuse, that's gonna be 10 over x. Are we going to use a shortcut and swap these? Yes, we are. That's what we do when the variable is in the denominator. So we will have 10 over cosine 40. And then just put that in your calculator. All right, that is 13 point. Zero five four. Wait, did I read that right? Yeah, thirteen point zero five four. Don't round up. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. The next problem um, involves this. Uh, sort of a double triangle. So I'm going to make another video where I will show you how to solve problems like this. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.